the squatter's conduct may be perceived as a breach of property rights and societal conventions. If I left my house, mm -hmm. say for a month. And a half. And a half. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think you would be entitled to move in? Well, um, take my stuff well it's a lot of, um, I'm not the only one that is squatting. It's a lot of other people on the block, if mm -hmm. you want to be technical. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people encouraged me to do what I'm doing now. But she wants her place back. Yeah, but I have put a lot of work in here and I spent a lot of money. I am on a fixed income. Is that power hooked up legit there? <laughs> um, my power is... That's not legit. It's not legit. No, you you, you steal on the power. I am blessed. What do you do for them? I receive social security. I don't have... What happened? Degrees. Disability? Yes. What's your, dis what's your ailment? I'm not going to say. You know, that's, that's her right. That's... The legitimacy of the squatter's intrusion into the premises is seen as a disregard for legal and moral boundaries, reflecting a wider pattern of entitlement and disrespect for private ownership. Questioning arises regarding the squatter's reliance on social welfare and disability benefits while navigating financial hardships and various challenges within the social support framework, highlighting debates around individual accountability, self-sustainability, and ethical conduct. Should the squatter choose not to disclose their ailment while asserting the right to occupancy, doubts arise regarding authenticity and identity. The squatter's evasion of responsibility by withholding information about their condition is construed as deceitful or evasive behavior, undermining trust in their actions.